Thank you for joining me on this Pentecost Sunday. Today is June 5th, 2022. As we speak a bit about the Pentecost Sunday today, I'd like you to know that my message is entitled, The Holy Spirit, Pentecost Sunday. Today is also a Communion Sunday, and so I would ask that perhaps you would prepare your emblems, and when the time comes for Communion, we will all be ready to partake together. Now, let's begin. We'll do a bit of reading first, and then we'll come into prayer. Fifty days after the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus, we celebrate Pentecost Sunday. And on this day, we thank God, our Father, for the gift of the Holy Spirit, who lives within us as a guide. The Holy Spirit, God, and Jesus are all in one. And sometimes this is hard to contemplate. Thus, they are called the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. To help us see them as united and as one, Almighty God. Perhaps to help explain this a little better, I could use the analogy of water. All of us know that when we freeze water, it becomes ice, a solid. And when we boil it, it becomes steam, a gas or a vapor. And when we leave it simply as it is, it is a liquid. In whatever form we have it, it is still water. Three distinct forms, but water all the same. God also has three forms. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, three in one. He is Almighty God. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, mm, help me to bring an explanation of your greatness as we think about Pentecost Sunday. Show me, Lord, in your word how Pentecost Sunday is a gift to us all. Jesus promised in John chapter 14 verse 16 that he would send another helper, the Holy Spirit, who reveals the truth about God. Jesus promised the Holy Spirit would stay with us forever. What a gift. Thank you, Lord, for the Trinity. Amen. Now, as we do a little study on this, let's open our Bibles to Acts chapter 2. And in my Good News Bible, which I will use, I see the title, The Coming of the Holy Spirit. Today, we'll look at verses 1 to 4. So we're in Acts chapter 2, starting at uh, verse 1, and we'll read through to verse 4. When the day of Pentecost came, all the believers were gathered together in one place. This was in the upper room. Suddenly, there was a noise from the sky, which sounded like a strong wind blowing, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then they saw what looked like tongues of fire, which spread out and touched each person there. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to talk in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. Wow. Simply, this message from Acts tells us the importance of the Holy Spirit. It reminds us to celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit on the apostles and the other disciples on that evening in the upper room. The Holy, the Holy Spirit descended on them with what looked like tongues of fire, we are told, and touched each one. 
They were filled with the Holy Spirit, enabling them to speak in foreign languages. This happened after the crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus. Jesus' promise was fulfilled on Pentecost Sunday as he told the disciples before his death that he would send the Comforter, and his Comforter would be the Holy Spirit. Now, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 to 11, which tells us the gifts given by the Holy Spirit. So 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting at verse 1, and we'll read through to verse 11. Now, concerning what you wrote about the gifts from the Holy Spirit, I want you to know the truth about them, my brothers. You know that while you were still heathen, you were led astray in many ways to the worship of lifeless idols. I want you to know that no one who is led by God's Spirit can say a curse on Jesus, and no one can confess Jesus as Lord unless he is guided by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit gives them. There are different ways of serving, but the same Lord is served. There are different abilities to perform service, but the same God gives ability to everyone for their particular service. The Spirit's presence is shown in some way in each person for the good of all. The Spirit gives one person a message full of wisdom, while to another, the same Spirit gives a message full of knowledge. One and the same Spirit gives faith to one person, while to another, he gives the power to heal. The Spirit gives one person the power to work miracles, and to another, the gift of speaking God's message. And to yet another, the ability to tell the difference between the gifts that come from the Spirit and those that do not. To one person, he gives the ability to speak in strange tongues, and to another, he gives the ability to explain what is said. But it is, the one, it is the one in the same spirit who does all this, as he wishes, and he gives a different gift to each person. This is indeed the scripture that gives us the listing of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which are gifts of grace. Now let's also look at Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 26, to see the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 26, to see the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and I'm reading in the Good News Bible. Verse 22. But the Spirit produces love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, and self-control. There is no law against such things as this, as these. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have put to death their human nature with all its passions and desires. The Spirit has given us life. He must also control our lives. We must not be proud 
or irritate one another, or be jealous of one another. Thank you, Lord, for your word in both of these scriptures that we've read. A long time ago, I came across an analogy which may help explain the difference between the gifts and the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Suppose we think of the Holy Spirit as a tree with its gifts symbolizing the roots and its fruits, the fruits of the tree. I read this a long time ago and it stayed with me. However, I cannot remember who to thank for this analogy. However, my thanks goes out to whoever wrote that because it was a good way to remember the difference between. So we think of the Holy Spirit as a tree with the gifts of the Holy Spirit symbolizing the roots and the fruits of the Holy Spirit the fruit on the tree. To summarize the gifts of the Holy Spirit, they are wisdom, knowledge, faith, power to heal, work miracles, speaking God's message, discernment, speaking in tongues, which is other languages not known to us, and the ability to explain tongues. And the fruits of the Holy Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, and self-control. Wow, amazing. The above is just a little explanation of the Holy Spirit. And there is more that could be said for sure. It's indeed a deep study. However, let me just say, the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity, sent to us to be our comforter. When we are baptized, we are baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. We can feel the presence of God through the Holy Spirit. When we pray, we can often feel a presence around us. And that presence is, as I said, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's power helps us discern good from evil, right from wrong, and allows us to stand firm in our faith. The Holy Spirit lives in us, as we see in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Surely you know that you are God's temple, and that God's Spirit lives in you, says 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Let's read that again. Surely you know that you are God's temple, and that God's Spirit lives in you. Well, folks, I think this is an excellent place to bring a conclusion to our message for today and to thank God for the Holy Trinity. Heavenly Father, we do thank you. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, whom you sent to be our comforter. May every one of us, Father God, be in tune every day with the Holy Spirit and allow that Spirit, Father God, to lead and to guide us, to prepare us for your work and allow us to carry out your work. And then, Father God, through the Holy Spirit, may we bring back glory and honor to you. Amen.
Today, as we prepare for communion, let us ask the Holy Spirit to bring to our mind that for which we need forgiveness. God wants us to come with a heart of repentance. We are to remind ourselves that Jesus bore our sins on the cross. And through his body and blood, we are forgiven and saved to eternity when we accept him as Lord and Savior. How beautiful is this? We remember his sacrifice as we come to the table of communion. Let us take a moment and lift our concerns to the Father and ask him for forgiveness for anything that we may have, any sin we have committed during this past week. As we share communion today, I would like to read from Luke chapter 22, verses 14 to 20. And we join in the conversation that Jesus is having with the disciples. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table with the, with the apostles. And he said to them, I have wanted so much to eat this Passover meal with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will never eat it again until it is given its full meaning in the kingdom of God. Then Jesus took a cup and he gave thanks to God and he said, Take this and share it among yourselves. I tell you that from now on, I will not drink this wine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a piece of bread. He broke it and he gave thanks to God. And he gave it to them saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in memory of me. In the same way, he gave them the cup after supper, saying, This cup is God's new covenant, sealed with my blood, which is poured out for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. For the precious body and blood of your son, Jesus whom we remember as we partake in communion. We do this in remembrance of him. Amen. How beautiful it is to sit at the table of communion and realize that without the gift of Jesus in our lives and without the completed work on the cross, this communion wouldn't have the significance that it carries for each one of us. For all of us who have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, communion is our way of staying connected to Jesus and 
realizing that without that precious gift that God sent through his son, we would not ever be able to think that we could enter heaven. But through Jesus, and by accepting him as Lord and Savior in our life, in our heart, then we are given that promise of eternity. So every time we take communion, it reminds us that we are not long for this world, but that our heavenly world awaits us. And that will be our eternity. There's a song that I would like to bring to you now, and it's called, There is a River. It was written by Max and David Sapp, S-A-P-P. I'm sure that some of you will know this beautiful piece of music and that you will sing along with me. Um, and if you don't know it, then just close your eyes and enter in to the beauty of the words, to the promise that's here, that's written, and that comes to life as we sing. <clears throat> Excuse me just a moment. today for the river of life that never shall run dry. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Now I'd like to ask you, if you have Jesus as Lord and Savior in your life, then you certainly understand this music that I've just sung. But if for some reason you're listening to me today and you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, I would ask you, I would invite you to come to the water. Picture yourself standing at the well and Jesus appearing. And as you speak in conversation, you realize who he is. And he reminds you lovingly and gently about your sin. And he offers you the water that will cleanse you. And that it will continue to cleanse you. As he said, if you drink this water, you will never thirst again. Would you like to have that in your life? The assurance of knowing that you have the living water within you? Then I would ask you to bow your head and ask Jesus to come into your heart today. Shall we do that together? Heavenly Father, I do thank you for Jesus. And I thank you for the living water. I thank you for what he pours into our lives. And Lord, I ask that Jesus would come into my heart as I open my heart to receive him and I repent of my sins. I ask, Father God, that Jesus would come into my heart and that I would know him as Lord and Savior. I ask, Father God, that you would send the Holy Spirit to fill me, to allow me to have that comforter in my life, someone who will guide me. Thank you, Lord. And God, I thank you that you are God the Father, that you are Jesus, and that you are the Holy Spirit all in one. Lord, I pray today that you accept me just as I am and change me to be who you see me to be. I give myself to you this day in the precious name of your son Jesus. Amen. Amen. Whoa, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. I believe that there was someone out there today that said that prayer with the deepest of sincerity and that already you feel that living water flowing through you. How powerful is that? Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Our God is an awesome God. And he sent the Holy Spirit to be with us. May I please remind you to stay connected with us on the website during the week and on Facebook, where we are serving you with the love of the Lord and we want you to receive his blessings. You can always bless others as you give into the ministry with your tithes and offerings, which are used to help those in need. It may well be your gift. Do you hear me? It may well be your gift that marks the difference in the life of one who is in need today. Bless you for being the hands and feet of Jesus. As I give you this reminder, I would now like to share with you as well that we offer e-transfer at mhmgive at gmail 
www.thepeacefulmind.com. If you make it a practice on your pay period to give your tithes and offerings that way over by e-transfer, it makes it very easy for you to be a part of the giving that God gives. And it allows us to be able to use your gift to help someone perhaps get in a new apartment. Maybe they need a tank full of oil. Maybe someone is in need of groceries. Those are means and ways that we can all work together. We can all be the hands and feet of Jesus. And we can all give glory to him for that. Thank you. Thank you for staying connected with us and giving unto the Lord as you might well be on the receiving end someday and be able to say, I remember giving. Now I'm in need and I thank the Lord that he's able to give to me. So, may you be blessed in your giving. Thank you. On Monday, tomorrow, Spencer will have his something to think about. And Tuesday, Spencer's Bible study is in Romans chapter 3, and he's going to be starting at verse 9. Please join him for that. This is a very good study. Wednesday, the Lord will give me another writing to share with you, and I'll be excited to do that. Thursday, Peter will bring us Peter's Picks. And I hope you're reading those every week and claiming one for each day. It's a beautiful way to start your morning by reading one of Peter's picks. And Friday, we'll have Pastor Todd's writing. Love it when he writes to us and sends it. It's so beautiful. Another way of keeping God's Word alive and well. And I'll be back next Sunday with another new message that God gives to me. You know, I am delighted that I uh, can carry the message to you. I feel like uh, a mailman or mailwoman, uh, where I get this beautiful letter from God, and then I open it up on Sunday, and I read it and share it with you. So thank you for joining me in the times when we want to sit before the Father and read his love letter to us. I pray that during the week coming, you will have a blessed week and that you will be able to come alongside someone and make a big difference in their life. Just as someone once stood beside you and made a big difference in yours. So until, until next week, God bless you. May he keep you in the palm of his hand. And may you know his blessings every day and see his glory all around you. May you be thankful and give thanks to him every day.